Andrew Brown here. In today's exciting episode, I make a French door out of parts that I got from like six different places. And somehow I make it work. Honestly, in this episode, I feel like MacGyver. Oh no! Look! I was filling this water jug up and then I lifted it over the Chemex and went to put it down here and it just clipped the corner of it. I'm devastated! <sighs> Alright, so we've got a opening to finish, some weatherboards to cut out. We've got to form a sill, solve that little problem that I had with the timber sill. And then we've got to build a French door set. That's what all this is for. here. It's one of my favorite things to do in life. It's like uh, having a new lease on life. Now before I go nuts and cut this line, all these weatherboards are going to drop so we need something to support it. So because we need to cut along here, the floor's going to drop. We need like a solid sill here for our door. So we need to get rid of these. But we also need to support the floor so it doesn't drop. And that's what these are for. Bit of LVL ripped down. And we're going to make it slide underneath there like so. Might be a bit tight. Okay, so we've added another layer of timber here because we've only got 75 mil concrete nails. We're hoping the nail goes all the way through. Drum roll, please. Bang. Woo, that went all the way. No resistance. Air only! No batteries, no gas. Well, air is a gas, but you know what I mean. Funny that it doesn't want to hang down straight. Bam. Cool though. Compressed air just banging a nail into concrete. I made a whole episode about doing this box corner. I'm devastated. If you ever run out of work, just call me around and I'll <laughs> create some more. Alright, we're gonna throw a lintel in here, despite the fact that 
basically the whole top plate is a lintel because it used to be a balcony it has that long piece of timber running all the way across I want some timber that will hold itself straight at the very least it would be a good piece of timber for the top of my door to be supported by So with a renovation like this, it would be lovely to get it up to the modern standard, but without taking all the cladding off, you're never going to achieve that. So piecing in the paper like I've done is about the best you can hope for. And the good news is, as I pull this place apart, I'm finding very little moisture damage, like almost no moisture damage, no borer, a few ants here and there. So I'm hoping that by sealing things up a bit better, we'll help prevent that but overall it's really good how's the painting going Jess? yeah it's getting there pardon? it's getting there it's quite therapeutic I can't hear you it's quite relaxing It's all happening. We're building a door essentially. We are using second hand parts, we've got a door leaf and everything, but we're building a whole new jam and sill. And that's exactly what Ray has been doing. Nearly finished eh Ray? Nearly finished. So this will be the front of the jam and these two grooves will be kind of hidden when the door's shut and any water gets between the jam and the door, it runs down there rather than yeah, getting caught, that's pretty much how it goes, right? Hmm, yep, you explained that quite well. Oh, yeah, don't, don't show the ugly bit. <laughs> <laughs> so these doors here are the second hand ones that we're using. And we did get it with a door jam, but the door jam I don't think it was treated, it was showing signs of water damage. Also, it's not the correct depth for our walls. If you remember what we did in the bedroom, we added another layer of insulation and we're gonna do the same thing throughout this whole living area. So why not start from scratch with a new wide door jam that can, uh, that can go the full depth of the wall. Speaking of doing it right, this was a bit of an adventure, the sill. So this is what you have to do when you put in a new piece of timber joinery in New Zealand get a sloping piece of timber that's what this is you get some window wrap on it that was a mission trying to get that in in behind the weatherboards I ended up taking these weatherboards out to get the window wrap on correctly bit of a mission but then once the window wraps on you put the sill tray that's what this is it's got a bit of a kick at the back here and the idea is that if any water gets onto here it won't track back up it'll just come out here and then you have your five mil packers on top of that and your timber sill will sit on there and you've got a separation between the timber sill and the flashing. But another important detail that I think a lot of people could easily overlook. The window is going to end here, but the sill tray continues. The window opening is 40 mil bigger than the window is. And the idea is that if you ever have a leak between the framing and the window, it can drop down and hit the sill tray and go out. So now I need to make the door sill. Let's 
going on there, eh? Found some old glue in your cabinet. Uh, What's wrong with it? Uh, nothing. It just looks like custard. Uh, one of the advantages of building the door frame from scratch is we get to cut in the weather grooves. I had to retrofit it on the bedroom window, but now we can do it from the start. There you go, this is going to be the sill. That's the bottom there. And then the sill is going to be glued to there. In terms of cost, this is a lot of work. And I don't think it is cost effective to do this. So if you're thinking about recycling a door and you're trying to do it to save money, that is probably not going to work out. The guys who make the windows can do it way more efficiently. But if you want to do it just because you like the idea of recycling old stuff, well, this is a great option. The last uh, few weeks have kind of been a bonus because in my head the beam was the last job before Christmas. I thought as long as I get the beam in before Christmas I'll be happy so we're running on bonus time here. So the fact that we can spend a bit of time get this double door made, pretty sweet. We're safety glasses with glue. I actually had an accident years ago before I started building. I did about a year of boat building and they had me, um, we're building like a 40 foot catamaran and they had me mixing epoxy like 10 litre buckets pouring epoxy and resin together and just using like a big timber paddle anyway I didn't know what I was doing I was like 17 and I've just got this big paddle and I'm just going like this round and round and round trying to mix the epoxy together and it, as the epoxy kind of cures it heats up so a piece of the epoxy flicked up landed on my eye and burnt the retina and I just remember like going up to the office and saying, um, my eyes stinging, something's wrong with me. And then the boss at the time was like, oh yeah, just wait there. We'll, we'll take you to the doctor soon. And I think I was waiting for like half an hour with my eye, my hand over my eye, retina burning, and before one of the guys just went, you know, if this, Scott, jump in the car, I'll take you to the hospital. And I had like an eye patch for like a week. No permanent damage, thankfully, but it was a lesson. Always wear safety glasses when mixing this nasty stuff. Let's head overnight to dry. Might be a bit soon, but let's pull it apart. This is arguably even more experimental, what I'm doing with the doors here. <laughs> this is probably gonna fail. But it's my house, so I'm willing to give it a try. I've added timber on the bottom here to extend the door. The door's too short. The timber runs this way, and then this piece runs that way. Now I've... And I've just added a piece on that runs this way. It's the same timber that's made of cedar, and this is cedar. I have epoxied it on the screws and all the rest of it so it should be strong but there could be movement and if there's movement you might see a crack along here this is my best idea for making the door a bit longer I hope it works okay. I'm sure it'll be great are you not roasting? I am a bit warm I'm just trying to protect myself from the sun though do you not have a long sleeve white top? no I don't this is merino many confused calls back and forth from me at the hardware store to Scott. I think we figured it out, right? Stainless steel hinges? Yeah. Also, bought blueberries. Ooh. $15 for half a kilogram. There you go. Mm. And I did the most Nelson thing ever. I did a blueberry tasting. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I went, to, I went to an orchard and the guy said, well, what one, what one do you want? I said to him, there were different kinds. And so I did a tasting and I went for the more slightly sour variety. So what vintage are they? <laughs> I don't know, but they're really nice.
has been so much harder than I thought it would be. Trying to get everything precise, cut everything in a way that I think will be strong enough. You know, because I'm kind of making things up as I go. It reminds me of doing cabinet making. Not because of the style of building, but because of how much you can underestimate the difficulty and underestimate how easily they can do it with machinery nowadays and experience, of course. Of course, if you do this every day, a window like this is probably simple. This is my first time and it's, it's complicated. There's Ray there, sanding away. Let's go somewhere where you can hear me. We've got the door jam made and I need to pull it out now so I can get the door opening ready and I'll show you that right now. Ray is sanding up those doors where we add a little bit on the end and then he's gonna get some primer on there. We've got some hinges but they're not the perfect hinges. We need to get some other ones but what we have will we'll do because I just wanna get these doors on, get everything primed so the door's ready to go. I'm very happy to have access to the front garden here. So this is part of what I mentioned earlier about the sill tray. In order to have something for the door jam to fix to, I need to add this piece of wood. So the door jam has something to fix to. And it's even more obvious here, the door jam has something to fix too while maintaining that gap. Question, Ray? Let's answer the question. Can he hang a door? You might drive a Bentley pal, but can you hang a door? I felt like it moved, but it did. But the screw should. We have a sill that was from a window. We have the door leaves that were door leaves. We made brand new jams. Part of the sill is a... What did you say, cabinet? A wardrobe, wardrobe, wardrobe. frame. It was a wardrobe jam that we pulled out of that bedroom that we renovated. New hinges. New hinges. Old, old paint. Old paint. <laughs> no. You wouldn't tell. Yeah. No, it's awesome. Still got a chisel and hinges over there, but... What's exciting about this is, this is, Scott said before, this is one of the things you point out when people come over. Oh yeah, you know, we, we put a door there. Yeah. It's like something that's actually going to change the way the house feels. A lot of stuff is quite invisible. Well, no, actually the, the beam does change the way the room feels, but you know what I mean. Uh, it worked out alright. We're going to put some double glazing in there as well. We'll cut out those bars and it'll be one big rectangle in each door. So I've got facings and scribers and all that, but oh, we'll do that later in the next exciting episode.